You're gonna need a bigger boat. In 1975, he was responsible for ushering in the era of the summer blockbuster with the heart-pounding thriller, Jaws. Then he brought back the thrill of the Saturday matinee with 1981's Raiders of the Lost Ark. And the following year, his story about a little lost alien named E.T. became the highest grossing movie of all time. Of course, we're talking about one of Hollywood's most successful filmmakers, Steven Spielberg. The Academy Award winner has directed 29 motion pictures, 20, from biopics 20 House Democrats. to sci-fi adventures to sagas of war. And at age 70, he's showing no signs of slowing down, with four more features in production. Now HBO is pulling back the curtain on his 50-year career with a new documentary, titled, simply enough, Spielberg. Every time I start a new scene, I'm nervous. And it's like going to school and having to take a test. I've never heard the lines spoken before. I don't know what I'm going to think of hearing the lines. I don't know what I'm going to tell the actors. I don't know where I'm going to put the camera. And every single time, it's the same. But I'll tell you, it's the greatest feeling in the world. I'll tell you why it's a good feeling. The more I'm feeling confident and secure about something, the less I'm going to put out. The more I'm feeling, uh-oh, this could be a major problem in getting the story told, I'm going to work overtime to meet the challenge and get the job done. Joining us now is Susan Lacey, the producer and director of Spielberg. She is best known as the creator and executive producer of the PBS series, American Masters. Susan, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you. I'm delighted to be here. And well done. How did you convince Steven Spielberg to do this? You know, it wasn't that hard. Uh, I shouldn't say that because <laughs> it's something I'd wanted to do for a long time. Uh, and then I, I interviewed him for a film I did on David Geffen. Mm -hmm. And we had a really good time and enjoyed it. And he does not do interviews. But he did that because they were friends, and he yeah. and, and we had a gr and he felt very comfortable, and I got sort of the message that uh, okay maybe I'm ready for this, but only if you do the film. Right. Wow. And you ended up doing uh, 14 interviews with him. Yeah. Over yeah. Some 30 hours of yeah. film. Over a long period of time, it was actually shocking to me how much time he gave. I didn't expect it. Right. Uh, and <laughs> first interview. Uh, you know, two hours later, he was 11 years old, and he said, <laughs> he like, said "This is going to take a minute." Yeah, and he said, uh, "This was fun. When are we doing it again?" <laughs> and that's kind of the way it went. Surprised both of us. Right. That, uh, and we spent a lot of time together, and and uh, he opened up in way. You know, he's never done a director's commentary. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't do interviews. Yeah. He's never participated in anything about him. One of the stories so. I love is was goes back to you know he was kind of obsessed with Lawrence of Arabia as a kid, and it actually almost discouraged him from being a director, right? Yeah. Well, he, when he told me that story, I knew that I was going to open the film with that mm -hmm. for a couple of reasons. One is it's shocking that at a young age he almost gave up his dream of being a director. Why did he almost give it up? Because the bar, as he said, the bar was so high. He didn't think he could ever achieve that. Mm -hmm. But what that, what that told me, the stories it told me, is that's, that was his aspiration. Yes. That's where he wanted to go. Yeah. And you, then it was interesting. You talk to, not just Stephen, but you talk to all kinds of Hollywood luminaries, including his peers, some would say, Martin Scorsese, Francis Ford Coppola. How do they think of him in this particular moment? Well, he was part of that 70s group of what they call the movie brats. And I have a wonderful section in there of all this footage that Stephen shot during that time, which nobody except maybe his archivist has ever seen, lock and key. Uh, and they were all so young and starting out and showing each other their stuff. And George Lucas says in the film, we never thought we were going to make any money at it, which always makes me laugh. Every wow. Time I hear yeah. it. wow. We never thought we were going to make any money at this. We were just a bunch of kids, you know. Uh, but they all knew from the beginning that Stephen was not the same as them. Hmm. Right. They all thought of him as kind of a nerd, didn't they? Yeah, well, he's a nerd, and also he had very dis different aspirations. Yeah. He wanted to be David Lean. They wanted to be John Cassavetes. Right. Yeah. There's a totally, right. Yeah, yeah. totally different sensibility uh, there. And Stephen knew from the beginning, which is another reason for starting with Lawrence of Arabia, that that was the direction he wanted to go. He wasn't going to be a scrappy independent filmmaker. He was a Hollywood guy. Of the 29 features he's directed over the years, did he share with you his favorites? 
<laughs> well, his his answer is, I'm a father to all my children yeah, and all yeah. my movies, and I'm not picking my favorite. But, And he actually didn't. I think there are some films that are more autobiographical than others. Yeah. And I think Close Encounters was probably the first really personal film because he wrote it, mm -hmm. by the way, which is... Uh, which we don't think of we don't think, think of Close Encounters. And, and he had made a little movie when he was 16 called Firelight, which is his first yeah. movie about contact with aliens. And in, the, in that, the aliens weren't such good guys. Well, yeah. Yeah, we are excited to watch it this evening on HBO, Susan. Bravo on being the director for Steven Spielberg. Daunting. The premiere is again tonight at, H, tonight at 8 p.m. on HBO. Thanks, Susan. Thank you. Congrats.